What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Tuesday, October 24th, 2017. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the busiest lady in the business, Andrea Renee. What's good, Greg? It's been too long, Andrea. I know. We said five days. Is that it? I thought you were going to replace me with Gary Whitta. It's getting close. You threatened to fire me on Friday's episode, and I didn't like that. Well, you know what I mean? It's just when you get somebody in here who's so British, <laughs> where he can say the dumbest things, but he says them with an accent. Everybody's like, he's got to be right. He's he gets like he one hit movie, and it all goes that's it, to his that's head. That's it. You know what I mean? He's all over it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No. He's had... I know, I know several. he's had more than one, Kevin. Well, I'm two, just, right? What, I'm trying to make a point Eli here. And then, uh, the other one, too, one. After Earth. After Earth wasn't a hit, though. That's Whatever. not a Gary, but I mean, you know what I mean? I blame Jaden Smith. You know what I mean? That's If we're going to blame somebody for After That Earth, movie had so much potential, too. Did. Yeah, I know, I know. No. Uh, Andrew, worth pointing out for everybody at home, it's hot today. It's unreasonably hot. I think all of the West Coast is having a heat wave right now. Very dumb. I don't like it. That's why there's no tie and why I'm wearing shorts. My legs yes. are pasty. This I might be the last time I get to wear like a, a no sleeve outfit. Yeah, I, uh, we keep thinking that. Yeah, we keep hoping we're gonna get. I that have fall these winter. cute like sweaters all lined up, ready to go. My long sleeve button downs. Nope, still no, in the closet. Still here, but the skull's working. Yeah, Halloween, it's Halloween is coming yeah. quickly. Yeah, I still haven't figured out what I'm gonna wear on next Tuesday's show. You gotta figure it out. Is we're in costume. I know. Do you know what you're wearing to the Halloween party this weekend? Um, so John and I have been talking strat. Okay. And I think we figured out something that's kind of clever. Okay. And it involves him wearing a really goofy looking costume. Good, I'm sure he'll really like that. Now, I asked him if he would be up for it. And he looked at the costume and he was like, yeah, I could do that. Sure. <laughs> so, but you know, he's going to have his Diet Coke and complain the whole night about it. Well, we thought about going as food items because, you know, he has two separate Diet Coke costumes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So... He's got a problem. That's what that we call that a problem. <laughs> I think, you know what I mean? Well, it was like his shtick for a long time. So people actually gifted him those costumes. I understand. I understand. So. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is kind of funny games daily, each and every weekday on a variety of platforms. We run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about before giving you some perspective, reading your questions, having a good time, and hanging out with you, the best friends. If you like that, you can watch live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. However, remember, we don't check the chat. That's not what kind of show this is. This is a polished podcast. God damn it. If you want to be part of the show, you need to write into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. If you're watching live and you want to correct us, you need to write into kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what fact we screwed up while we were live. That way, at the end of the show, we can read them, set the record straight for everyone watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames or listening on podcast services around the globe. Housekeeping. Hidden Agenda is out today. We'll talk about it later. There's a question about it. However, there's also a Let's Play, a Kind of Funny Plays, up on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Check that out. Over on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny, the Kind of Funny animated series Halloween episode is live. And then remember, we are barely eh, a little more than a week away from Extra Life. November 4th, Saturday, November 4th, 24 hours of video gaming, raising money for the Children's Miracle Network. We'll be doing it here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. Come be a part of it. You can go right now, kindoffunny.com slash extra life. Sign up to participate, raise money for sick kids, or if you want to, you can just go there and donate and then watch the stream on Saturday. We'll be telling you to donate then too. I, I forgot to ask you when I came out to talk to you. Any housekeeping we need to keep in mind for you? I mean, the thing Nothing that I, you can announce. No. Yeah. So we have something really big happening very soon and we haven't been able to announce it yet. When you are able to announce it, even if you're not on the show, I'll say it for you. Thank you. Give me a poke to make sure I see it. Cause I, I somehow missed that. The what's good game store has launched. Yes. So yeah, I definitely, that's the news. If you, a lot of our fans of what's good games have been asking for merch. And as you guys know, merch is not something you can just do overnight. It takes you, you have to, figure out some designs, you have to source a vendor and all these things. But finally, the What's Good Games merch store has launched. We are happy to be partnering with Teespring. And so it's teespring.com slash stores with an S slash What's Good Games. Or you can just go to our Twitter page, our Facebook page, or What's Good Games.com. You can just direct click the link from there if that's easier for you. But we've got men's shirts. We've got lady shirts. We've got uh, a kid's tee. We've got a coffee mug. All kinds of cool stuff. Nice. So. Oh, we did get coffee mugs here. Yeah, and we have um, some cool holiday items coming in uh, another couple of weeks. Nice. Remember, there's a Kind of Funny Games Daily shirt, too. Kind of Funny yes. com slash store. So if I'm you're pumped. out there, if you're out there and you're buying the What's Good stuff, come buy one of our shirts. <laughs> but we were just having a discussion about how more of the Kind of Buddy uh, kind of funny best friends who are ladies or enjoy wearing ladies 
t-shirts should speak up and buy stuff because that's why unfortunately there's not enough kind of funding lady stuff because we're not buying enough of it apparently so you guys yeah. can't stock it so yeah. it's one of those we put them up we're looking around you know we're we have ideas joey noel has a whole board over there of things she wants to do <laughs> and ideas she has planned so nothing to announce yet but we're working on stuff for you hi joey hi. we're complimenting how good you are at running the store oh, and how you have plans for the future that we're not ready to announce yet exactly Someday soon. Basically, what I'm saying though is, if you want a female shirt, tweet at Joey Noel. And it doesn't even have to be one of our shirts. You just want a shirt for girls, just send it over there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Here's where I, I want to know. Yes. When I, you and me are personal friends. Yes. If you were out there watching or listening right now, and you heard me say girls, would you be offended? No. Okay, cool. Just making sure, because I call everybody boys and girls. That's not your dudes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I say that, but I don't. I, I feel like I don't want because ever... the context means it, you're using it in a in a friendly way. Okay, just making sure. Yeah. One time as a reporter. I was doing an article, right? And it was about um, some uh, some association that was had women's in the title. And it was like very, it was a serious subject. And I made the mistake of not, you know, I'm, not, I'm Greg Miller, but when I'm a reporter, I'm not. I'm very, you know, tell me this, that. Right. I was this like, is in your newspaper days, exactly. you said. Exactly. So okay. old school. And I was young, too, and stupid. And I, but I was just like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, so yeah, what are, the, what are you girls doing over there? And she was like, it was like hard stop. And I was like, fuck. And she's like, girls. And I'm like. Sorry, I'm 22 or whatever I yeah. was. Like, I don't mean it like that. I call everybody kids. Yeah, the yeah. safe word, if you're ever in doubt, is ladies. Oh. Young women can be ladies. Yeah. Older women can be ladies. Women or females of all ages can be ladies. Now, and from what I understand, 2017, obviously, we're trying to set everything straight here. Yes. Girls don't mind being called chicks anymore. You can call them chicks all the time. If I walked by, if I walked by you in the street and I was like, "Hey, chick," you'd be like, "Oh, that's no, cool. no, that's bad." No, huh. chick, chicks is something that should be reserved for for use among your friend circle. I was or people was that joking, you know, right? Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're being facetious. Yeah, of course. Yeah, don't don't use chicks. For now, let's begin the show with what <laughs> is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> time for some news. Three items on the Roper Report. Oh, Dozen. Kevin's into it today and I love it. Kevin, you taking that time code? Oh, yeah. Oh, he's Excellent. been great about it now. You yeah, you're fine. I'm, Don't worry I'm about it. I'm taking these this crazy is, uh, time this codes. This giant weight has been lifted from my shoulders. I know. Five days, everything's changed. <laughs> Gary Wood now CEO of the company. <laughs> Uh, the first topic on the Roper Report is actually a uh, response to yesterday's topic about NeoGAF. Remember, we talked yesterday about allegations of sexual assault getting brought up against the founder of NeoGAF, Evilor. Or is it Evil Evilor? Because I went, today he put up his response on GAF, and as I said yesterday, I had no idea who ran GAF. But this pops up, and he intercaps it. So it's E-V-I capital L. So is it Evilor? Who knows? I guess it is. I Who don't knows? think it matters. No, but what evil? <laughs> when I say you're evil, or that, well, we're already setting the, the tone for this. That's true. It's like, hey, Doctor Doom murdered somebody. Who would have seen it coming? Like that's you know, it was in the name. We should know. They called him Mr. Glass. True. Anyways, <laughs> founder of Gaff has responded to these allegations. Gaff is back up now after being down for a weekend. I'm not going to read the entire thing. I've cut out a main section that talks about it being a rough year outside of gaming. Uh, they're closing down the off-topic port portion of Gaff right now. When it comes back, they won't talk about politics on it. And then also he, you know, he's ta he's talking about his actions failing the mods. I'll tell you when I skip ahead. For now, though, let's begin at the top. Hi. An allegation of sexual misconduct has been made against me by an ex. It's not true. The individual making the accusations is incredible. The, the story doesn't reconcile logically with the facts, and there's plenty of evidence, evidence and witnesses to corroborate that. It'll be a process. All allegations of this nature are serious, of course. I first got word of it on Wednesday when a screenshot of a Facebook post was handed to Vote, I believe one of the mods. I immediately talked with my mod team about the contents of the screenshot and clarified that it was baseless and explained some of the details concerning my former associations with her and tried to ensure any com I'm sorry, any concerns from the team were addressed fully and transparently to everyone's satisfaction. On Thursday, I heard that she had deleted the accusation from Facebook and wasn't entirely sure how to proceed from there or how this would all play out in the public space at that point. Then, Friday morning, the screenshot made its way to NeoGAF and chaos ensued. I was in the process of writing a statement that entire day to address formally, uh, to address, formally address the allegation. But the community had erupted in a flash that morning. While the moderation team was trying to restore the peace, accusations and threats concerning the screenshot started shifting to them as well as by association with me. And I was asked by my team to do something to fix things and get the heat off of all of them at least. I was beyond exhausted at, this, at that point. Though stretched too thin in the, time, in the time since the post had first appeared and seeing unprecedented, unprecedented events unfold on NeoGAF. I was slow and weak. 
I failed to handle it quickly enough and let the team down. Here's where he talks about the rough year outside of it, off topic, actions and failing the mods. You have no obligations to respect me or believe anything I say about my personal life one way or the other. But if you're going to be here and participate on NeoGAF, respect the mod team by following the rules and behaving. The team is diminished at the moment, and folks who stuck around care very much about this community and its future. Be considerate to them. That's non-negotiable. And then he says uh, goodbye, and that's the end of the post. So again, GAF back up now. Uh, no off topic. Uh, and still kind of a train wreck right now as it tries to course correct and see what its future has. Andrea, you haven't talked at all about this. It was just me and Andy yesterday. Correct. I think we need to stress as always, sexual assault bad. Sexual yes. harassment bad. Whether yes. this one's true or false, it's again, it, we're at that shitty point of this story that is he, sh he said, she said. And I think it's important for people to refrain from making judgments about that situation since none of us know what happened. Uh -huh. And I think taking sides is not going to be beneficial to either of those people um, or uh, taking sides, you know, and trying to, you know, guess what may have happened, right? Those two people know what happened and it's up to them to decide how they want to proceed with it. maybe it's her pressing charges or maybe they come to some kind of reconciliation. I don't know. Right. I think that's beside the point. I think what's important here is that um, how quickly the mods organized to show him, hey, this allegation will be not tolerated. Any kind of hints of nefarious behavior will not be tolerated in this community. And I think that that's great. It just was surprising to me considering all of the mudslinging that happens on Gaff. Mm. Um, it, it felt a little... I, my my gut instinct when I first read the story was it felt disingenuous for the mods to be like to be taking a stand with this one issue, but not taking a stand on the terrible things that have happened within their forums. Mm. Um, but I'm glad that they you did. You mean the normal mudslinging, the normal fights? Yeah, well, I mean, as somebody who has had more than one r incredibly negative gaff that I've written about oh, sure. my yeah. personal life, like, I mean, it's it's hard for me to, to pat all of those people on the back and be like, oh, good job, you guys, you took a stand this time, mm -hmm. but you didn't take a stand all of these other times. Gotcha. And so I see why, you know, people have come out publicly to say, like, kind of, you know, F you gaff, like, I don't care what happens to you, good riddance, like, don't let the door hit you on the way out kind of mentality. I understand where that comes from. But I think gaff serves a purpose. And when you get, when it's moderated properly, you can have some really fantastic discourse and some really great discussions. And I watch, like many other people who talk about news, I watch the gaff news alerts and the threads because that's where you get some of the best, like, breaking news sure. is, is people on gaff, like, showcasing leaks or talking about, you know, um, stuff that's generally behind closed doors. And so I think it serves a purpose and I would like to see it return to it for that reason, but clearly needs an overhaul. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting crossroads right now of what happens with NeoGAF. And you raise an interesting point of like, yeah, I mean, obviously I've had people be mean to me on GAF or mean to kind of funny or mean to IGN or something to that effect. But for the most part, I've always found, I mean, it's, it's the internet in general. It's, it's humanity in general, right? Where it's always a few bad apples who want to go in there and be terrible people and say terrible things that get all the credit and not the people who are sitting there and discussing. There's always fascinating, you know, before all this, because the front page is a disaster now, front uh, fascinating conversations of like, what does this mean right now? And I've, I've gone in there and read them on a mor in the morning with a cup of coffee and mm, this is good. Yeah, no, there are, there are definitely many positive parts of GAF. It's just there are also negative parts of GAF too that I hope if they're going to rebuild it that they take a hard look at that. But I think people are calling into question if, you know, Evilor is the guy to do that, mm, right? Like, mm. can he, with this kind of shadow that he's in right now with these allegations and people not knowing the truth and having it truly be a his word against her word kind of a situation, it's like, will the fans of GAF you know, be able to trust his leadership and trust that he's going to do it the right way. And can they, will that be looked at as them condoning these, yeah. this behavior? And are they kind of turning a blind eye to it? It's hard to know because yeah. we don't know what happened in that room that night outside of what both of them said. And clearly they have conflicting reports about what happened. And that as fans, that puts us in this weird spot because <laughs> you don't want to victim shame and not take the word of somebody who feels like they were victimized. 
demise. Right. But you also don't want to falsely accuse somebody who's saying this didn't happen. Until proven you know, guilty, it's right? like, you know, we're kind of in this weird place where it's like you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Right. And that's why, I mean, bringing up, I want to make sure I always bring up the response. You know what I mean? When, mm -hmm. whether, and I, I forgot all about it from last night. It's funny how much news happens b between kind of funny games daily that I'll do. I'll remember one part of it, but not the other part. David Ballard put out another statement about the whole Naughty Dog thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And it is that thing of when Naughty when he says his part and Naughty Dog says their part, we put it out there and it's not we're not the court of public opinion. We're not going to. All right. Now, what? who do you believe, Andrea? Right. That's yeah. not the fucking take we want on this show or what I want you to do at home. I want you to know that these are real things that are happening. They shouldn't be tolerated. If you've been abused, you need I, you don't need to. I don't mean to put it on you like that. I think you should come forward. I think we're in a different time now. I think that I don't think I'd like to think the stigma is not there, but I know it is talking to friends and colleagues. Oh, it's definitely still there. But I think it's getting less right. And I think the way to make it not be a stigma anymore is for people to talk about it and is for people to address it in an honest, open, frank fashion, right? I do want to throw out Balor's statement. Unless, I'm sorry. You no, want to no, right go in ahead. Uh, last night, David put out, thank you everyone who have reached out with love, support, and questions. I appreciate you believing in me. I appreciate you believing in me. For people's safety, I will not publicly name the persons involved. I gave the name of the individual who sexually, sexually harassed me to SCEA, now Sony Interactive Entertainment Human Resources, and it was their responsibility to pursue the appropriate course, course of actions. Federal and state discrimination claim timelines have expired for my case. Therefore, no legal action can be made. My hope is that this account of my experience gives others awareness about sexual harassment in the workplace and the ability to not stay silent. I also hope to heal from all this and regain my dignity and respect. Thank you, David Ballard. And I think that's probably, for the most part, my I got one of the sinking chairs we have here, kind of funny. <laughs> uh, I thought you guys were gonna order them yesterday. Now, no. It got delivered yesterday. Oh, exciting. And we tried it out, and me and Nick were like, nah, this isn't a good chair. So we sent it back, and now we're still on the hunt for chairs that don't sink but are comfortable. Okay. I don't want anybody putting their booties on chairs they don't like. And me and Nick's booties did not agree with this. But I appreciate <laughs> Kevin Coelho, of course, ordering it, trying it out. Not doing what Greg would have done. All right, we need new chairs. Order four of the first ones I see and we're done and we're out. You know what I mean? Smart. We, test we it out. It. And not to mention they had, they had kind of like the leathery, not the fake leather seat. No, you don't want that. And it was all like sticky. It's all and it was sweat. Like super round and small. Yeah, no, no, not about that. Not about that. Gotta go cloth. Yeah, exactly. Um, we, we digress. Oh, well, now, now, no, now. Oh my gosh, no. Balance ball stool. Balance ball you stool? monster. Get, get out, out of here. here. Kevin, nobody wants abs. <laughs> no, that's not what we're about <laughs> Nobody here. wants abs. We're not doing that. So yeah, to summarize. Sexual harassment, bad. Don't violate people's personal space. If you do, I like to think that the, the the silent majority out there is there to support you. I know that there's a vocal minority that'll slut shame you and do this and you had it coming and blah, 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 blah. Fuck them. Yeah. Fuck them. Everybody exactly. who's a good person needs to speak up or it's only the bad people talking and it sucks. Yeah. Just be a better person. Don't try to exert force or authority over people for devious ways. Just be better. Lift people up. That's it. That's the big part. Lift people up. Let's move on. Number two. As you know, Switch firmware 4.0 out, 4.0 is oh is out. <laughs> However, it had a feature that snuck past just about everybody. Uh, GameCube controllers are supported now via this firmware. You plug in your little GameCube adapter from your Wii U. You plug in your GameCube controllers. You're set to go for the most part. Kind but, of. But why? We'll but, get to that. Don't get ahead of yourself. Why? Don't get ahead of uh, <laughs> IGN, I'm going to quote their whole thing. They have a breakdown of it. Twitter user Master Mew King was among the first to discover the new controller support. It's not foolproof as yet, with many re users reporting that it takes multiple attempts to pair a pad, perhaps explaining why Nintendo hasn't publicized the change. The process is, on paper, fairly simple. Make sure your Switch is set to accept wireless, wired controllers. My apologies. Plug the adapter in. Plug the controller in. Choose to pair controllers. Then press L and R. Up to four GameCube controllers can be used simultaneously. All Switch games appear to be compatible with GameCube controllers, although there is a caveat. You won't be able to use any ZL commands, and that breaks my heart, because I love a good ZL command. <sighs> Fuck you, Nintendo, for these button names. Or the home button. Now you say why. You know why. Bobby Wasabi writes in and says, Hey, Greg and Andrea. <laughs> to put it bluntly, I don't think I've ever been more excited than this week in my life. Not only do I get to experience Mario Odyssey this Friday, but also I get to play it with Nintendo's best controller, the GameCube controller. Do you think... News of GameCube's controller compatibility bodes well for possible GameCube virtual console. Will you be using this controller for future Switch games, including Odyssey? Thank you, Bobby Wasabi. No. 
I will not. Now you better you you are on some mighty thin ice. I don't like the way you're talking about the GameCube controller. When you've got the Nintendo Switch Pro controller, why would you use a GameCube controller? There's a reason, like, listen, it was good during its time. It had its purpose, but we've evolved. We've iterated. Yeah. The technology is better now. Okay. What about for Smash? That's the big one. Everybody wants it for Smash. I don't play Smash. What? What, what Kevin? What? what? No. What? I don't play Smash. What the fuck? Oh, my gosh. I don't play Smash. Wow. You've outed me. No, 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 no. It's, 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 a, it's a tree of trust. I don't mind that. You know what I mean? It's just like I don't play these dork PC games. I understand where you're coming from. We all have personal preference. Right. That's just a crazy one. Smash never got you. No, never. Wow, mm -mm. That's awful. Wow. The only fighting game I ever really got into was Mortal Kombat. Oh, okay. Wow. No, Smash is great. Yeah. You should play Smash with us sometime. Well, I'm sure you tried. I mean, right? Let's of just course, stop. you've I, tried. Okay, yeah, listen. Right. I've never, I've not never played Smash. Do I've, you know who Mario is? <laughs> Don't make me fight you across this table, Miller. I would Miller. not want that for a second. Um, of course, I've played Smash. I've played many different types of Smash. I just, it's not something that I've chosen to put time into because as with all fighting games, if you want to be good, you have sure. to practice. Sure, 100%. I and understand I just that. was never really motivated to play. This flies in the face of what I wanted, where I, w I am ready for Nintendo to be like, we're done with the GameCube controllers. I love my, I love the GameCube controllers. I loved my GameCube. Playing Smash with it is the only way I play it on the Wii U because, of course, that's how you play games on the Wii U. You're going to play Smash. But where we are now and the Pro Controller being so good and the fact that the Switch's whole deal is docking and undocking and taking it with you, I'm going to, when Smash inevitably comes to the Switch, hopefully as in fucking March when they're just like, hey, here's the, this fucking <laughs> Smash Bros. Deluxe Wii U, whatever. Here it is. It's right. everything. I'm going to be playing that with, you know, a traditional gamepad experience off of the Switch as a portable console. And when I put it on a TV, I'd rather just use a Pro Controller rather than plug in GameCube and try to start thinking about, wait, where's the, the giant A button? How does this work with these other right. things? Uh, so I was always, uh, Tim was very vocal that if Smash was going to come, when Smash inevitably comes to Switch, they needed a solution for this. I'm sad that it happened because now Tim's right. Tim isn't going to evolve with us. He's going to stay the little grub on the ground while sure, I'm a but, butterfly but in your dirt. But let him stay a grub. Yeah. Sometimes you, life needs people to be the grubs. But then you're going to have excuses. You know what I mean? Who's, who's, who's they? Tim or Gettys. you? Tim Gettys. What's when his I, When excuse? I'm beating him, and he's like, well, I don't have the GameCube controllers. I'm playing on a, a Pro Controller. It's totally different. It's not the way to play. Well, then get good, I guess. That's, that's what you got to say. Thank right? You. That's smoking like a true kind of funny champion. That's what that's all about. Because Andy Cortez will tell you, oh, I lost the championship to Greg and Mario Kart, blah, blah, blah. I was sick. No, Andy. Yeah, I don't care how sick he was, Kevin. He, he laid out the challenge. He could have played me in any game. That's Tell fair. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, what do you think about GameCube uh, Virtual Console this time around, though? I mean, I think of the same thing I think about all Virtual Console offers, right? We need it, and I'm not quite sure when we're going to get it. It's clear that Nintendo is pushing other projects right now, but um, I think the arcade announcement that they made recently is a step in the right direction that potentially they'll bring stuff from their library over. I don't know why they wouldn't. It's just an opportunity to make more money. Mm. I don't know how difficult the ports are. They can't be that much more difficult than the Wii U. No. Well, I mean, to put a pin in that thing right now, my thing is I think GameCube Virtual Console is a slam dunk. I think it'll happen. I want to play Luigi's Mansion again on my Switch. Yeah. I'm all in. However, your question of like, why, where is it and what's happening? Why haven't they done this? Which we've all talked about. You know, why, Many where, times, why, yeah. why is there no Virtual Console? Number three, the NPD results are finally in for the month of September. Uh, Best-selling hardware of any kind in video games, the SNES Classic. Right there. That's why they won't make a fucking virtual console because they're still putting these things out and selling them like crazy. And I don't know. I think... The, you know, have you saw, you saw the rumor of the or the patent? I forget if you were on that episode that they pat there's a patent that could be uh, you know a, a Game Boy uh, classic kind of thing. Oh yes, I saw that. The thing that's surprising to me, and maybe you guys can write in to kindoffunny.com slash kfgd and let let me and Greg know. Please, would you be interested in paying not maybe eighty dollars, but let's say like fifty dollars or even like. Fifty nine ninety nine for all of the games offered on SNES Classic on Virtual Console as a bundle. Yeah, of course. 
And guess what? If they do that, they don't have all of the overhead of parts, of manufacturing, of shipping, of retail marketing, of making the box that the thing has to come in. But they don't Packaging. get in USA Today. They don't get in USA Today and they don't go on Good Morning America. They don't get on the top 10 Christmas list. That's true. They don't get the headline of that, that the two profits, thirds of NPD they, was them. I think the profits that they would make, though, would far outweigh all of those costs. Yeah, they will do both. Well, the thing is, like, they won't even do both, right? Well, they're not going to bundle those games together. They're going to put all 30 of those games up and charge 10 bucks a piece. And then they're making it I way mean, more. I mean, $10 a 10. piece okay, is okay, too, I'll, is I'll too much. Off. I'll back off. I'll back off. Not $10. Not I don't $10. know. I mean, clearly they're going to make another classic. I think the, I mean, I know when you and Tim talked about it, I don't think the Game Boy Classic makes sense because it's already a small device. Yeah. And like a lot of the charm of these classics is that they're like little mini versions of but themselves. But the thing about it is this, it is a throwback, right? Where I remember my chunky Game Boy and how much I loved that thing at the time. So if it was like a $50 gift and it had but the golf and the I don't touch or know. I don't think I would tolerate that level of graphical fidelity. Well, see, my thing about it is I think that we're starting to bump up to how what can they actually do with like you know what i mean because are they going to make an n64 classic and then are we is going to pack in with four controllers and no it would pack in with two and you can buy extras you could buy like the colors separately or whatever right but it's like are we to the point that that and i don't know anything about tech obviously i'm a fucking moron or to the point that you're not a moron greg i'm an idiot kevin tells me all the time i mean you're really letting kevin tell you you're an idiot Great point. Great point. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't start this feud. I like you guys being friends. Yeah, I don't know if, like, I love you, Kevin. if we can shrink down the N- the N64, <laughs> let alone, oh, I guess you're using the same. Yeah, I don't know. That's the thing is like, as we start to bump into the wall of like, all right, where does it start to go too far with tech and overhead and purchases? That's when the virtual console comes around. And right. I would imagine they ride out this SNES and then announce, hey, we're doing a virtual console. I would really like to know what the profit margins are on these things. Yeah. I like to know a lot of things going on at Nintendo, but they refuse to talk about it. I any know, of it. dang treehouse and your secrecy. It's Bill, Bill Trinan, you piece <laughs> of trash up there. Beat me at arms. No, and Bill is a here. very nice person. He's a very nice person who I hate. <laughs> yeah. I love him so much. We have a good feud. It's a fun time. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, best-selling hardware SNES classic. Uh, the best-selling console of the month of September Switch. Destiny Two is the number one selling yeah. game for the month, and it's also now the best-selling game of 2017 to date. Congrats, Not Bungie. Uh, number two, NBA 2K18. Number three, Madden NFL 18. Number four, FIFA 18. Five, the usual suspects. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> the new ones, though, at least. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Number six, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. All right. Not too shabby. I'm happy to see that up there. And this is a great point to point out as well. There were rumors last night that Capcom's in trouble. So those are all unsubstantiated. And that's why I didn't make a full Roper report thing. Yeah. I knew it would c- pop up here eventually. But there are, yeah, unsubstantiated rumors that, yeah, Capcom's wavering and might get bought Not a out. single person was able to provide screen caps of this supposed article that was on Wall Street Journal. Yeah. So We'll keep our ear to the ground here at Kind of Funny Games Daily. I have top people, like Kevin, looking at the news all the time. <laughs> uh, number seven, Grand Theft Auto V. No surprise. Number eight, N- NHL 18. Number nine, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And number 10... Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. That to me is is impressive. I know that they've been doing a lot of free weekends and stuff Siege? like that, and they put out a content pack semi recently. Yeah, um, I really enjoyed Rainbow Six Siege. I we enjoyed it in preview mode, and then for some reason when it came out, it never got enough time, and it seemed like it was like a game that was going to just go away. And it was definitely one of these games that nope, a community found that game and kept it alive, and now there's spikes every time something crazy happens in it, and there's esports and all this other jazz. Yeah, more power to them. It's fun. Andrea. Yes, Greg. I can't wait for Mario. <laughs> so soon. I know. Very soon, but not today. If I wanted to know what came out today, where would I go? You'd go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. <laughs> yeah. You like that, yeah, Kev? Yeah. yeah. Very heartwarming thread yesterday on um, Kind of Funny subreddit of uh, somebody asking if they when they listen to the shows, if they like bang on the table with us and everybody's like, yeah. And when I listen to kind of funny games day, daily, I do all the jingles and stuff. And I'm like, Oh, it's so it's, You're breaking my heart in such a good way. It's too much love. Uh, out today, destiny two on PC, uh, hidden agenda on PlayStation four, a play link game that has a let's play up right now. on kind of funny.com. Well, youtube.com slash kind of funny. And Javier wrote in and says, good afternoon, Greg and Andrea. 
Greg, I just saw your Let's Play of Hidden Agenda, and it looks good. However, I do have a concern slash question. Do you have to have other people play with you, or can you play it by yourself? Also, do you think PlayStation 4 controller support will ever come to this game? Supermassive Games is a talented studio, and I love Until Dawn so much. I'd like to play it with a controller. Greetings from Florida. P.S. Your cancer, cancer panel was very touching. Thank you. Great panel. Thank you. You were there. I was there. They call you out for coming in late. <laughs> There's comments of like, I see Andrea Renee coming in. It's because I had a, I had another thing right beforehand. I was running over there. This was not this was not me <laughs> casting judgment. I just thought it was funny that people were like so identifiable. I see you, Andrea Renee. There was all these comments. Anyways, I digress. From what I understand, Hidden Agenda is only multiplayer. I on the page for it when we were looking at it last night when I was trying to figure out how long it might be. I believe it's two to six, and it said that. So no, I don't think it is. Kevin, can you Google around make sure I'm not wrong on that though? Or kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. Were you not listening at all? How can Here, I got it. Thank you. Don't worry about it, Kev. Andrew Renee's on it. You just keep taking time codes. You just slammed your thumb really hard on the desk. Meanwhile, do I think PlayStation 4 controller support will ever come to it? No. Uh, PlayStation's pushing this PlayLink thing. If you're unfamiliar with PlayLink or Hidden Agenda, I guess I should explain it a bit more. So, Supermassive, the folks who made Until Dawn, they notice people are playing Until Dawn as like a movie where they're with their friends and they all scream out what to do or at PSX when they debuted it or de debuted it with Hayden running from that character and we all screamed out what we wanted them to do. Uh, they make Hidden Agenda, which I describe it more as like, think a, it's an interactive movie of course, but it's also like Secret Hitler where on your phone or your iPad or whatever device, you download the, the Hidden Agenda app and then you connect to it, similar to Jackbox. When you go in there, though, you start playing, and you get cards dealt to you that are hidden agenda cards. So for every big choice, you guys who are playing each have, or one of you has a hidden agenda, the others don't. You have to argue with who it is. You have to try to decide where people should go, who they should work with, stuff like that. So it's like a board game where you're making choices in a video game. But that's the whole point of PlayLink. PlayLink's about using your phone. Uh, the other ones are that it's that that's you game, the new SingStar game, and there's that quiz game we talked about here. That's from some of the people who made Buzz, but not a Buzz game. So will controller support come to it? I doubt it. Because I think it's a playing link game and it's designed to be played with other people. It's designed to be played that way. It says for one to six players okay. on PlayStation.com. It's that thing where they have what they call a story mode and a competitive mode. And then they just put up a video on PlayStation blog today. Kevin, go watch the PlayStation blog video on Hidden Agenda that explains the difference between solo mode and competitive mode. No? You're shaking your head no. That's what you're going to do? Kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. We'll check in at the end of the show and we'll figure it out from there. Oh, okay. Uh, next up on the new release list, Just Dance 2018 on Xbox One, PS4, Xbox 360, PS3, Wii U, Wii, Switch, and PC. Holy God. Ubisoft wants you to buy that game on anything you can. You know why? Because it's consistently their top revenue generator. Does well. Yeah. Year over year. Knights of Azure 2, Bride of the New Moon, comes to PlayStation 4, PC. This is the Police comes to Switch, and that sounds fun. Yo Ma Wari. Midnight Shadows comes to PlayStation 4, <laughs> Vita, and PC. Deer Hunter Reloaded comes to Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Fishing Master comes to PlayStation VR. Fort Defense North Menace comes to PlayStation 4. The Inner World The Last Win Monk comes to PlayStation 4. Knowledge is Power comes to PlayStation 4. That is the other PlayLink game I was talking about that's like Buzz but not Buzz. Uh, the Mummy Demastered comes to Xbox One, PS4, and Switch. Knights of Azor 2. Why is this been here twice? I don't care about Knights of Azor that much. Weird. Is it? Yeah. Whatever. Repella Fishing Pro Series comes to Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Rugby 18 comes to Xbox One, PlayStation 4. SingStar Celebration, another PlayLink game, comes to PlayStation 4. Slay Away Camp, The Butcher's Recut, comes to <laughs> Xbox One and PlayStation 4. That's You comes to PlayStation 4. And if you buy That's You, why don't you pay attention? That game has been free for, it was free for like two months, and I told you over and over again about it. PlayStation Plus, but I assume you have. We Sing Pop comes to Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Night Terror comes to Switch. Mad Age and This Guy comes to PC. And then Team 17 is releasing the first DLC for The Escapist 2 today. It's The Wicked War. It's a spooky prison right on time for Halloween for play PlayStation 4, PC, and Xbox One. Tuesday's on a hot day. They're killing me. It's too hot, Andrea. It's too hot, Greg. New dates. Injustice 2 is coming to PC later this year. There's an open beta starting on October 25th on Steam. Uh, Night in the Woods is coming to mobile sometime in 2018. Attack on Titan 2 is coming to consoles and PC March 2018. And then via Kotaku, Hitman will get a Game of the Year edition on November 7th. IO Interactive announced today. It will bring a new campaign, new escalations, and a chance to try elusive targets you might have missed. This 
was interesting enough news that Eric Myers <laughs> wrote into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, hey, KFGD crew, not a question, just a comment. People afraid of games of service, I'm sorry, people afraid of games as services ruining single player games need to take a look at what IO has done with Hitman. With the recent announcement of a game of the year edition adding more content, the game has only gotten better as time has gone on. Elusive targets, bonus levels, tons of challenges, and can be played completely offline. While the model can certainly be used improperly, it's not all doom and gloom, and can easily work in a single player game. Thanks for your time, Eric. Eric, great point. Io, congratulations on continuing with Hitman. You're doing things right. But it's time to move into reader mail. And we're starting with Quirky Man. Not his real name. Left no name in the field, so I made one up. <laughs> Quirky Man wrote in and said, What on earth is a games as service? You guys are talking about online games, or games with microtransactions, or games with both. Words have de definitions. This is how we are slowly letting escorts and shoutcasting become terms that a few people use. I have no idea what he's talking about there, but okay. It's commentators in pro gaming. I'm not mad. So Gregory, I hope you don't use an angry voice, but seriously, what on earth is a games as service? Andrea, yes. your definition. Um, games as service means a game that is continually supported post its initial launch with ongoing content to invigorate the community to keep playing the game on a consistent and regular basis. That's good. I think the way, the simplest way to understand games as service is actually to drop service and say games as community. Rather than you come in, you play the game, the single player and the multiplayer or whatever, and then bounce. This is a game designed to be the everlasting gobstopper. It's designed that you come in, you play it, you make progress in it, you build a life, a character, friends, a group, a raid clan, or whatever you want to do. You bounce, but you're going to come back in a month. You're going to come back when the next big content drop is. It's essentially the model that MMOs originally... Sure operated under and then free to play games particularly in the mobile space kind of took up the mantle for and now we're seeing that spread to both consoles um as well as you know additional new pc offerings obviously it started on pc went to mobile came to console and now we're seeing kind of everybody jumping into the trend of games as service because of how much money it makes which yeah. is why we you know talk about what happened with this role in ea when we talk about loot boxes and why it's such a, a big deal for a lot of people to kind of get onto this games as service trend and that's the big thing where games as services aren't loot boxes they aren't microtransactions but the proliferation of those and some would say the infection as they infect other games it's coming from that where i think in the old days it was a very game dev story kind of thing of hey we made a game sequel it annualize it do this bop bop bop, bop put it out and now publishers are finding that what it is is let's get people into the destiny universe the division universe let's get the for honor universe get them into this game that they feel invested in and treat it like an mmo where they come back time and time again Right. I mean, games used to have subscriptions. Some games still do. I mean, but it became less and less popular to charge a monthly fee. And instead, it has become more popular. Instead of charging a monthly fee, you make the game free for the barrier of entry. Everybody can try it. And then you charge for, you know, smaller items in game, thus microtransactions um, and loot boxes to be able to continue funding the development. And clearly, it's worked for a lot of games out yeah. there. I mean, it's one of the more popular console offerings, Warframe, is a perfect example of. Yeah of a games of service that was really successful on console. Yeah. So there you go. Leave a name next time so I don't have to make it up, quirky man. <laughs> uh, Brent Freeman left his name and he wrote into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Hey, Greg and Andrea. I heard on a previous episode that Andrea was playing The Evil Within 2. It being one of my most anticipated games of the year and seeing as it hasn't been touched on a topic wise since I just wanted to hear a quick rundown and thoughts about the game from the busiest lady in the business. So I have been playing The Evil Within 2. Um, I think last time you were here, you just started it. Right. I'm, a, I'm it at chapter 11 now, so I'm pretty deep okay. into the game. And um, I'm really enjoying my time with it. And I generally don't, you know, kind of play. I'm not drawn to survival horror games or horror games in general. Just because, like, 
the jump scares and like the graphic violence just generally isn't something I'm interested in. I prefer stuff that feels a lot more fantasy, like in destiny, for example, like when you're shooting all of these aliens, there isn't like really grotesque their blood animations and things off. like that. Yeah. Right. It feels a little bit more f fantasy. Um, and in survival horror, that's like the exact opposite. They want you to kind of like feel the terror, but this game um, has such a great blend of, storytelling with action and exploration and the survival horror elements that I was really pleasantly surprised with. And I didn't spend enough time with the first Evil Within to mm. compare the two, but clearly a lot of people liked the first one enough that Bethesda invested to make a second one. Sure. And the story is really intriguing. And, and like I mentioned, since I didn't play enough of the first one, like I had had no problem kind of picking up the story, even though you it would help probably if you read like a little Wikipedia article, yeah. get caught, <laughs> get caught up quick on what Sebastian uh, Castellanos is doing where it, what happened in the first game. But it's um, what I really, one of the things that I'm frustrated with though, with the game is the combat is a little clunky. Um, the camera and the way that it turns when you get into an actual boss fight it's frustrating because you have such limited resources. I mean, you have to craft your bullets on the fly. And when you craft them on the fly versus at a crafting table, it uses like three times the amount of resources. And if you can't get your gun aimed up quick enough and you fi misfire, then now you're down maybe one of three bullets you mm -hmm. have. And so uh, that part of it needs maybe a little bit of finesse. Um, but the artistic vision, like Shinji Mikami and like, the world that you can see in like where it came from this like really dark twisted place inside of his mind. There's some like really bizarre, gross stuff happening okay. in that game. And um, so you should know that going in, this is a 100% M rated game. Like gotcha. do not play this with your children <laughs> unless they're like late high school, I would guess. Obviously you're a parent, you figure it out on your own. But my recommendation to you would be like, this is not good for kids. Um, so it's great for Halloween though. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to go back to it? Yeah. Because there's I'm so much happening. There's so I'm many games out. Yeah, I'm so close to the end that I'll, I'll probably finish it. Maybe I'll stream it or something yeah. um, to, to finish it out. But um, yeah, there's a lot of games. But it was good. I was pleasantly surprised. So if you were on the fence of trying this game out, I would say give it a go. Cool. Yeah, but this is good at that, I think, with their sequels, right? Where I started Wolfenstein 2 last night. And it was like the thing of like, I never, I wanted to play Wolfenstein. I wanted to beat Wolfenstein one before it came out, but everything got away from me. Yeah. But I started it up and it was like, oh, they give me this recap movie that I remember all this. I remember this. All right. Here's a round where I stopped and it finished off. And then I was right into it. And I was running around shooting Nazis and was having a fun time. Yeah. And I'm playing on casual because I will not be shamed into playing hard. <laughs> Super casual. You live your life. Don't worry about that. Don't let people get in your head. Good. I won't. Graham the G-Bat. Writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, hello, kind of funny super friends. I want to talk about when voting with your wallet fails. There has been a lot of talk lately about the death of single player and the rise of games as services. Last year, when Titanfall 2 came out, not only was it praised for being a complete, a great complete package, but also for how it handled DLC. I think Titanfall 2 did it perfectly. They gave away all the future modes and maps for free and all the microtransactions were only cosmetic. Not only that, but not a loot box in sight. You knew exactly what you were buying and they still had hundreds of free in-game options to make you and your Titan look badass. Seems like the fairest model between customer satisfaction and monetization, right? Right, he was asking a question. Well, not many people have bought it. How do we get the message across to publishers and developers that they are doing, that developers, what they are doing is right when the masses don't pony up them sweet dollar bills. I love a good linear campaign, and I fear people aren't willing to buy games like, parentheses, not game of the year, but best surprise game of the year ever, Evil Within 2, or Titanfall 2, because they'd rather do the same raid a hundred times in Destiny, or play hundreds of hours, or spend extra cash in Overwatch just trying to get Tracer in different colored pants. <laughs> How do we champion a game with lower sales as the right template to build off of as good game as a good gaming experience? Thanks for all you do, and sorry if this was a bit long-winded. The G-Bat. Well, the G-Bat, I think, you know, you're maybe comparing apples to oranges a little bit um, because a game like Destiny and Overwatch are designed as a games 
a service platform, mm. whereas a game like Titanfall 2 didn't really feel like that was originally the design. They meant to put in multiplayer and obviously a single player campaign, and they had clearly intended to support the multiplayer with DLC, but it didn't feel like there was enough in that multiplayer to sustain ongoing participation for many months, if not years at a time. Here's my hot take. Hot take. Give As it to someone me. who loved Titanfall 1 and enjoyed Titanfall 2, Titanfall 2's mistake was making a single player campaign. I love that campaign though. Campaign campaign was great. And I, well, I, I didn't think it was as amazing. It was, I, I enjoyed the campaign. The campaign it was, was really good. good. Yeah, exactly. Yes. People at the time were like, this is the second coming. And I'm no, like, oh, it, it wasn't. Obviously, it wasn't, is cool, sure. it wasn't game of the year for, for a reason, but like it was very well done. The problem here is that it, it's literally what I always talk about in this show. When I talk about season passes or microtransactions is that the people I feel like who are playing the game and ha have the most not valued opinion, but whose opinion should matter a little bit more than most. Then there's the ring outside of it that's just like, I'm never going to play that game, but this game, $60 and doesn't have a single player, it can fuck off. It can do this. It should have had a single player. Should have you played Titanfall? Oh, no, it's not my kind of game because it doesn't have a single player, doesn't this? Blah, blah, blah. Titanfall's multiplayer was so good. Titanfall's multiplayer got me, Greg Miller, who now plays more multiplayer games, obviously, is this all I've done this year, but didn't don't, doesn't play first-person shooters, doesn't definitely doesn't play them online. I played, I regened in Titanfall, which isn't like the most crazy thing if you played a lot of Titanfall, but I played a lot of Titanfall to do that, and I loved it. And my problem was, to what you're saying about Titanfall 2 even, because it was a continued problem, Titanfall 1 wasn't a games of service where I didn't feel like I was in a community. I felt like I was playing a multiplayer mode. And so when I got distracted and left, I never thought to come back. And the story always mm -hmm. goes that Alfredo sat me down months after the fact and wanted to do a thing with me and get me back into it. And I was like, oh, oh, this is a cool mode. Where did all this come from? I didn't feel the way Destiny and Bungie speaks to me about what's upcoming. Here's why you need to be paying attention this week, all that stuff. Like, even though I'm, I'm not actively playing Bun or Destiny right now, I'm still in that community. I'm still there. App's still on my phone. I still check in on the, the group, the uh, uh, clan. Des uh, Titanfall didn't feel that way with Titanfall 1, so I left. And rather than I think, uh, why, why am I, uh, Respawn. R Respawn and uh, EA as a publisher go, why are people leaving this? Let's have a real conversation. Oh, games and services are getting big. Well, how do we build that in? How do we do this thing? They went, oh, you know what? It needs a single player. Everyone said single player. Everybody wants single player. Give them a single player. And they gave a good slash great single player. Mm -hmm. That was great. And it was applauded by critics. Everyone in that surrounding circle that wasn't ever going to play Titanfall or didn't play Titanfall 1 was like, oh, good job putting a single player in. I don't want to play it. I'm just happy you finally put that in there. And instead that game again crashed because I played it Play through the single player. I'm like, whatever. I want to play multiplayer. And I jumped into multiplayer and I was like, this feels a lot like Titanfall 1 multiplayer. Like, I'm not getting the same enjoyment, excitement out of this. This feels like well-worn territory. And I bounced out. Not, And I don't know what came to it after the fact. Because again, I wasn't locked in as like, this is an ongoing thing I need to pay attention to. I think it's less about the quality of the gameplay in Titanfall 2 and more about the spoils of choice. Right now, there's just so many mm -hmm. options for players to spend their money and their time with that something is going to get left on the floor, right? Like yeah. somebody's going to fail. Sure. And unfortunately, you know, like it looks like Titanfall 2 took a hit. I mean, oh, they yeah. launched in a very competitive window. Against Battlefield. You're like, which wait, was, what? <laughs> which was, uh, I can't believe that EA made that publishing decision. I'm sure that they didn't want to, but there was something behind something the scenes happen, that yeah. forced their hand. But I mean, there's just too much choice right now. And when more and more games are becoming live services, like you just can't, you just can't play them all. Yeah. Like I think about how I've left Paragon to play Destiny 2 and like I haven't picked up Paragon in like two months yeah you know and that sucks because i want to go back to that game but i don't have time to do both and i've even set destiny down and i haven't picked destiny up in, in a couple of weeks because there's just too much else happening and that's what happens when we're in this new generation of gaming where the hardware whether it be pc or console is more powerful than it ever has been and game developers can do more within each game than they've ever been able to do before and that means you're spending more time in each individual title than you have in the past especially when it comes to you know triple a franchises that have been around for multiple years yeah. or multiple entries and it's it's tough yeah it's rough and i just feel like in titanfall's example i feel like they went with what it seemed like the consensus was saying rather than maybe what their player base would have wanted did did you see um uh, man vr's um 
post that Polygon wrote up. He did a po- he, he did a podcast with Waypoint, and he talked about how you know when he was at EA, that he could kind of see the writing on the wall for games as services, mm, and mm. how you know single player games like Mass Effect, for example are kind of like pigeonholed into having like a hundred million dollar plus budget and that there's no space for stuff that's less than that. Sure. And so that's why there's been this argument back and forth in the ind- industry is like, is the single player experience dying? And clearly it's not like, let's not like get into hysterics, right? Yeah. Like single player experiences are not going anywhere. There's still millions of gamers who like playing them. I mean, hello, look at Zelda. Um, so I think it's, interesting though that he brought up that there's this pressure from the publishers that if they're going to put single player in the game it has to be part of these big big budget projects Mm -hmm. and it has to be tied in with some kind of multiplayer option instead of just doing a multiplayer only game which is why I really applaud Bethesda for believing in machine games enough to say look at Wolfenstein 2 the new Colossus is a single player only game we're not going to shoehorn in multiplayer because it's going to sacrifice quality and content for the single player experience and this is the narrative single player experience experience we've designed and that's what we want to do yeah. and i'm really glad that there's giant publishers like bethesda who are willing to take those risks to say hey like yeah we have multiplayer games but but single player is just as big and we want you know the creative people who are making those experiences to have the freedom to not have to worry about adding in content that they don't think is right for their title that's a big part of it right is commitment to your vision and again, I'm not harping on Titanfall. I know there's a million things going to it, but I feel like that was the problem with Titanfall 2 is that they sacrificed their vision. And I think Titanfall 1 is ahead of the game in so many ways of, yep, we are a, we are a, we are a multiplayer-only game and we're charging you a lot, but we think it's worth it and it's going to be awesome. And I think you could get away with that more nowadays, but you would need to dial in more of what we've learned from how to keep an audience going and how to keep a service, a game as a service going. Right. Final question of Reader Mail comes from Riggs23. He says... Good day, Greg and Andrea. October is coming to an end, and Extra Life is just around the corner. Kind of funny.com slash Extra Life. Saturday, November 4th. 24 hours of games. Help sick kids. And before you know it, PSX will be upon us. Uh, the people must know, will there be a kind of funny games daily show at PSX this year? Thanks for all you guys do, Riggs23. P.S. If any best friends need to split a hotel room, hit me up on Twitter. I've got a room on Convention Drive. Um, all that's still TBA. PSX always comes together late first. I don't think it definitely. I don't think it'll be a kind of funny games daily panel. That that I, I can't have you up there. You know what I mean? Outclassing me every five seconds. <laughs> no, I would, I'll gladly have Andrew up there. I don't know. I've I've reached out to Sony. But like, hey, do we do you want to do a panel this year? But we'll see if any of that happens. And it's also the thing of it's Game Awards right before, and then it's uh, the P- PSX Saturday is you assume a press conference, and it's like we do the live streams here, so then that only gives us Sunday to work with for stuff like that. At the very least, I can tell you that I'll do a Portillo's meet and greet on Sunday. <laughs> then sat, uh, Monday, we are driving down to San Diego, as we've talked about, to do the kind of funny community Christmas party at Polite Provisions that night, because the bar is now themed Christmas. Every wear ugly sweaters, bring a white elephant, gift exchange, we'll all do that thing. So if you're going... That sounds fun. And if you're not from around there, like what, Anaheim's... Joey Noel says an hour and a half, two hours from San Diego. From Anaheim to San Diego by car. Depends on traffic. So that come down about right. either Sunday night, Monday morning. You just fly out of San Diego the next day. Have a good time. Hang out with us. What's your plan for PSX? Anything to announce yet? Still working on everything? Nothing to announce See, yet. That's it's, it's, working it's, it, on some stuff. It seems crazy that we're this close, but it's also like there's, there's a million other so, conventions. There's just so much happening between now and then. So when we know official things, I'll let you know. At the very least, Portillo's on Sunday, right, Joey? Yeah. And then Monday, kind of funny, community Christmas party at Polite Provisions in San Diego. Time to squad up. This is where one of you writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. You give me your name, your username, your platform, what game you need help in. I read to hear the best friends find you. Everybody has a good time. Today, that shit's not happening at all. Instead, Sam Worms wrote in. And said, hey guys, long shot, but here goes. I am looking to join the event planning side of the games industry. I've been looking on developers' websites for job postings and applying wherever I can, but I'm not having much luck. I live in Minneapolis and would be more than happy to move, but I just can't get my foot in the door. So I'm looking to this wonderful community for help. Are there any best friends in the industry who are looking for event planners? I'd be more than happy to send a resume, so please feel free to reach out. I'm on the forums, the kind of funny forums, as sworms1989. If there's a more appropriate place to post this, please let me know. I'm sure you get stuff like this all the time. Blah, blah, blah. No, it's fine, Sam. I thought it was a fun little one for looking for help. So I'll read it here. What I do want to point out, of course, is that literally IGN is looking for the role you're describing. 
So go to IGN.com, scroll all the way to the bottom. It's Ziff Davis. You know, there's a little careers link you can click on. You can go over there and try to take Kirsten Slater's old job. It's more than just event planning, but that's a part of it. But if you want to reach out to S Worms1989, you can go to the kind of funny forums. Uh, before you're wrong, Andrea, we got yes. a special. This trophy can go fuck itself. Jake Higgins <laughs> writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, I have a submission for this trophy can go fuck itself. I'm on my way to getting my first ever platinum trophy in Watch Dogs 2. And aside from some multiplayer stuff I can easily get, the one trophy I'm stuck on is called Hold My Hair. To get this, you have to take a photo of someone vomiting. Only problem is, you have to do it at night at this one bar, and if you miss it, you have to wait an entire day-night cycle for it to happen again. So yeah, fuck this trophy. I say to you, Jake H Higgins, blasphemy. I throw this one out. I have the Watch Dogs 2 trophy, and I'll tell you right now, the multiplayer trophies were harder to get than this one. You just go down to the waterfront, you walk around there, you eventually see the person puke. It took me two tries, maybe three. You can go fuck yourself, Jake Higgins. That's not a bad trophy. Watch Dogs multiplayer trophies, they can go fuck themselves. I'm a just god, Andrea. Of course. <sighs> Andrea. Yes, Greg. It's time for your wrong. This um, is where folks go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Correct us as we screwed up live. I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, it's okay. Um, it wasn't cleared from yesterday, so I was a little confused oh, for no, a second. Okay, sorry. Um, but um, Capitalist Pig says, for hidden agenda... It is listed as one to six players, which I mentioned, but he says it appears the solo play is simply like watching a movie with choices with a few timed hidden objects sections, okay. uh, QTEs, quick time events, and must all be done on a mobile device. So no controller. Okay. As but you can't play solo. Great. Yes. Um, now, this is an interesting one because there's actually probably some breaking news about this. So oh, no, Drooby Dooby Doo, -doo, 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 -doo says, I didn't hear it on your list of new releases today, but Planet of the Apes, The Last Frontier was released today on PSN. No. And, and then over on IGN, update, Planet of the Apes, The Last Frontier pulled down from PSN. Fuck. So, I was really looking forward to that game. Yeah, so actually, I got a chance to play this at GDC, and we can talk about it in a second, but apparently it was mistakenly on the shop earlier today. IGN has reached out for comment about the game's appearance on the store as well the full release is planned for all platforms. So it was listed as a standalone purchased cinematic adventure game for $29.99. Damn, I really want to play that. I was excited. So this is um, from uh, Imaginarium, which is Andy Serkis's development studio, and I got the opportunity to talk to some of the folks from the studio and get a lengthy gameplay demo at PAX West earlier this year. And I was very impressed. Clearly the cinematic quality of this game is excellent. Not, I mean, not surprising coming from Andy Serkis' studio. He really yeah. kind of pioneered certain mocap techniques, motion capture. Um, what was really interesting about this game is how it really does feel like a playable movie. And so you're essentially watching these scenes play out um, with these certain Planet of the Apes characters. And this is an original story set in that universe. Yeah. Um, and y everybody has a, a, a cell phone with the play link on it. And then you, essentially it's like, taking conversation choices a la Telltale Games or Life is Strange. And then it's almost like a voting system to mm -hmm. decide with everybody playing like which um, which choice you make. And they have a lot of moral and ethical dilemma situations that you built play both into sides, the game. Right? Cause it, 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 I remember the pitch being that totally sold me on it was the fact it's between the two movies. Uh, there's you're a group of uh, human settlers at one point or not settlers survivors. And then there's a group of apes and they start coming down out of the mountains looking for food and you run into it, but you play both sides of the conflict. I did not get to see that part where you get to play as the humans. We only played as the apes gotcha. and made the decisions for how they were going to handle this one situation. Sure. And, um, much like other games that include conversation skill trees, like, you know, your actions have like permanent consequences and the overall ending of how it will play out. Yeah. Um, I was really interested to see what's great about this is that it's, if you don't play video games um, or if you have people in your life that only casually play, or maybe you have a significant other, a partner or family member who you would like to play with you that doesn't really play because they're maybe afraid of using the controller or learning how to use mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. This is great because it's just button taps yeah. on your cell phone. And so it's a great like thing to do for couch co-op to play with other people. But awesome, um, this is interesting. Um, I guess you guys will have to update the story tomorrow if they announce an actual release date. Will do. Is that, that all we it? got wrong? Mm -hmm. Nice. Not a bad episode. All right. I can take that. Tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, your host is going to be Robin Honeykey. You know her. <laughs> Luna Journey. She was on the Kind of Funny Games Do you need something, recently. Nick? Nick Scarpino, why are you trying to ruin the show for us? I'm just, 
Why are you coming in here looking? They can't hear you. Oh, because Andrea always comes in to yell at you during your show. I see what you're saying. I understand. They can't hear you. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. <laughs> Remember, each and every week down a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about before giving you pr some perspective, answering your questions, having a good time. What do you got for me, Nick? Greg looks a little like an archaeologist right now. <laughs> like, Just look at your shorts. Like, like, it's like, very Jurassic Park. You, are, you look like uh, Sam Neill from the beginning of Jurassic Park. Well, I wanted a shirt that like complemented the, the khaki shorts. Yeah. And the Hold pale on, let legs. me look at this up so I can. You know what I mean? I just needed to make sure it was there. You can watch it live, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. You nailed it. Later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games or listen on podcast services around the globe. <laughs> no matter where you get the show, thank you so much for your support. We love and appreciate each and He's every one of you. just missing the next scarf. <laughs> <sighs> Nick, you, Nick, you're my Laura Dern then. <laughs> I'll be your Laura Dern any day. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs>